Hi, welcome back. It's Pat from PJM Scheduling Services. So I'm creating this video series and I want to show you all of the, the tools that I have for reviewing contractor schedule updates. So um, yeah, every month I provide a monthly report to owners and uh, I'll include a bunch of these different metrics in, in that report to indicate the health of the project and how things are going and how the contractor is accomplishing their plan and uh, kind of the confidence, uh, you know, having a high confidence level in the in when the contractor is saying that they're going to get done and um, and then if the con if the schedule is delayed, who's at fault for it? So this is one of the things that we include in in the schedule schedule reviews. So um, what this shows is in blue is the number of planned. Um, construction tasks that were scheduled to finish in each month and that is compared to the number of uh, of those activities how many actually were accomplished so for example in May of 2023 there were 143 construction tasks that were planned to, to, to be finished and of those um, tasks 108 of them were accomplished now you might be asking, well, what's a good benchmark to shoot for? Well, oftentimes we want to see an achievement rating of 70%. So on a consistent basis, if the contractor is accomplishing 70% of their planned tasks, that indicates a relatively healthy project where the contractor is intentional about the things that they're getting done. They're not being slowed up by, um, you know, maybe a lot of possible delays. Um, but this is just one one of the tools that we use. But in contrast, I want to show you what a bad schedule looks like. So in red, you can see that they're, they're, they're essentially accomplishing the same number of activities each month. And it's a really low percentage of the planned work. And the result is that each month the planned finishes are, is compounding. The number of activities that they're supposed to get done each month is compounding month over month. And so what you're ha what's happening is um, if they don't get those tasks done this month, they roll over and they still have to get them done next month, plus all of the activities that were already scheduled to happen next month. But now I want to show you how to, um, how to create this graphic and then how to uh, go about finding the information. So let's go ahead and let's start with um, setting up the table. So here we have um, we have four columns. One of them is the update period in column A. So that's simply the um, the monthly schedule update. So so we started off with April of 2022, and then May, June, July. So just sequentially the the schedule updates that you're going to receive from the contractor. And then column B is the planned finishes. So um, just that's a count of the planned finishes and then the actual finishes, the same count, and then the remaining activities. So if so, once we have all of this mapped out, what we can do is highlight all of it. And we'll go all the way down to here. And I'm going to go to insert. And I'm going to do a chart, a 2D chart. And I'm going to do this cluster uh, column chart. Okay. And so it looks like this it doesn't look very good. Let me go ahead and expand this. And so now we need to format it in a way that looks a lot better. So what we're going to do is uh, right click on the what we want is the remaining activities because we want to plot that on a second axis. So that's this data field here is this really tall one for me. So I'm going to right click on that data and say format data series. And um, over here under series options, I can say plot that series on a secondary axis. So I've done that. And now what I want to do is I want to change that chart type. Instead of a bar graph, um, I want it to be a line graph. So let's go up here while I'm while I'm selected on that data series. Um, let's go to change chart type. And down here under remaining activities, which is plotted on a secondary axis. I want to change that from a clustered column to a line graph here. Okay. All right. So that's starting to look better. What I don't like is on the secondary axes, uh, it's showing it's it's stopping at 2,500 activities, 
and I want this to go all the way to zero. So I'm going to right click on that axis, go to format axis, and my minimum bound instead of 2500, I'm going to take that to zero. And so now um, each month that's going to show hopefully the reducing of number of activities and eventually it'll hit zero. Um, the other thing that I want to do is I want to format this so that it's a dashed black line. So just click the data series. You can uh, right click it and say format data series. You can go to the fill options and under line, I'm going to say um, it, it's automatic color. I'm going to change it to black. And then the dash type, I'm going to change to this dash type here. So that's looking better. Um, and then the other thing that I want to do is uh, this, this whole entire data series, I can, you have these pre-selected options like chart styles. So I like doing this third um, style three. And then that kind of gives a border to the columns, just cleans it up, makes it look a little bit bigger. I, unfortunately, I got to redo this uh, series that I had just fixed. So let me fix that really quick. Go black and then my dash type. There we go. All right, so that is looking better. And so I have my, my count on the side here, and maybe I wanna add a, 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 an axi, uh, a chart, or what do you call it, an axis title. So let's go to um, elements, axis title, and we'll do primary vertical. And I wanna call that, um, what did we call that on this other chart? We said activity finishes count. So we'll say activity finishes count. And my chart title, I'm gonna call this um, activity traction report. All right, so we have the number of planned finishes followed by the number of actual finishes and then the remaining activities here. So that looks pretty good but let's go ahead and find this information. So what happens is the contractor submits their schedule update and we want to look to next month and see, you know, how many of the, the how many activities are they planning on accomplishing? So the way that we do that is um, I have, I have the, the schedule update open that I've just received and I'm going to create a new filter and I'll say, um, planned to finish next month. And so I'm going to say where the finish is within range of the data date and then the data date plus one month. So that's going to give me the, the number of planned finishes between the update periods. So let's make sure that that's checked. Click OK. So here are all of the planned finishes uh, next month. And then let's go ahead and look, let, let's add a column for activity count. So which is gonna be under the number of activities, activity count, let's move that over. And what I wanna do is uh, I wanna have a grand total of the number of activities under each WBS section. So let's go to the group and sort and let's say grand show uh, gr group totals. All right, so now let's collapse all, all of these, right click and collapse all, and let's go down to construction. So there are 104 activities under the construction um, WBS section that are scheduled to finish next month. All right, so then what I do here is I go back to our graphic and if I move this guy over here, so under planned finishes, I'm gonna say for, for, for next period, there's 104 activities that are planned to finish. So let's go through and um, let's see how many of those construction activities actually got done. So I need to uh, go to project maintain baseline and what i'm doing is i'm pulling in next month's update once i receive it and i'm going to um, baseline that file in and i'm going to look at the same activities that were planned to finish do they have actual finish dates next to them 
So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so I have it pulled in. Let's close that. Let's go to Assign Baselines, and let's assign it under my primary baselines. All right, so now it's assigned, and let's add a column for BL1, actual finish dates. Dates, BL1, actual finish. All right, so here's our construction tasks. Let's, let's um, change the group and sort so that we just go to the level two um, group. That way we're not having like a ton of groupings there. And then let's look at all of these. We can see here BL1 actual finish. So there's a lot of these tasks that got done, but then if we go down uh, even further, there's um, some of these tasks that didn't get done. And so um, some of them are blank, which indicate that they didn't get done. So let's just go ahead and copy all of these tasks into Excel. Because what, what I don't want to have to do is, is go in and individually count those. So let's just paste those in Excel and let's highlight the, the activities that have an actual finish date um, you know, assigned to them. And let's look at the count at the bottom here. I don't know if you can see the bottom of my screen, um, but it says uh, 92 activities were accomplished. So then what I'm going to do is go back to my actual finish dates and I'm going to plug in 92. All right. And the last step that I have to do is plug in the number of remaining tasks. So in order to do that, you need to go to the uh, the next month, you know, the most recent schedule update that you receive. So it's the um, I'm going to undo this baseline so that way I can I can go and open the June file, you know, the subsequent schedule update because it wouldn't be correct to look at the number of remaining tasks in this May schedule update um, because they may have added or deleted tasks in the more recent schedule update and we wanna account for those uh, when, we, when we have our remaining tasks. So let's go ahead and let's open the June schedule update. Here is June. So now that we have this schedule file open, all we need to do is create a new filter for the incomplete activities. So I'm just gonna say not complete, and I'm gonna say where the activity status, where the activity status is not equal to completed. And so I have that number um, 2,403 construction activities are now remaining on the project. And so now we'll just plug that number back into our Excel uh, template here, 2,403. So a big, big drop off there in construction activities. Um, so that's how you put the activity traction report together. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe down below. And if you need help on your project or are looking for tutoring in P6, please feel free to reach out to me at pjmss.com and you can contact us there. All right, see you in the next video.